Good afternoon, everybody. This is our fifth lecture on development and growth two. Uh, and today we're going to discuss some ideas about what we call human capital. Okay. So once again, we're going to benefit from using the production function framework that we that we were using. And now we're going to extend the model with this term human capital. Okay. So the idea is this, let me share my screen. The idea is this. Remember our production function. So in the simplest case, we wrote it in this way, right? Then you can uh, introduce labor. Uh, okay, in that way. Uh, so now I'm gonna tell you this. So there is this production function that means a different color. Okay, so there's output. Output is going to be produced by physical capital and labor, but now each worker <clears throat> will have a particular skill. Okay, or a particular um, human capital stock. Okay, so if you have five workers, let's say L is five, and the human capital of each of these workers is equal to two, then the total labor service that you employ, of course, would be equal to what? 10, right? If each of these five workers increase their human capital through on the job training, for instance, and increase their human capital uh, from two to three, then with the same five workers, you get 15 units of labor services, okay? Now, obviously, you may imagine that H2 equals one corresponds to what we call uh, raw labor, okay? So without any education and with some level of health, you may imagine that uh, H2 is equal to one, but if you have uh, you know, a good diet, a, a good physical strength, uh, if you have a decent education, then you can increase your human capital. You become more productive, right? If you are mentally and physically well, if you know particular skills, if you, if you have particular talents, then you become more productive for certain tasks. Um, in general, we think of human capital to be composed of two things then. One is health, both physical and mental. And the other is education. And here we are thinking of schooling, of course, but also what we call on-the-job training, okay? So you could be a worker, but you can still be educating yourself uh, through on-the-job training, okay? So first, we're going to look at a macro macro level, right? So, so if you want to uh, extend our model, let me just rewrite it again. And I'm going to continue with the continuous time version. Okay, so time is continuous, starting at some uh, uh, initial point equals zero. And for now, let's take HT as exogenous. So that's a, that's a, of course that's a, of course simplification. But for now, let's suppose that human capital is exogenous and common across workers, right? Um, remember what we have done before. We defined GDP per worker as this, right? And capital per worker in this way. Um, 
Then if you, if you write yt, what do you have? You have uh, ht to the one minus alpha, right? And kt to the alpha, okay? And if we still assume that s is the saving rate, right? And is the growth rate of uh, labor force and delta is the depreciation rate, you can show me k dot t is equal to s times ht one minus alpha kt alpha minus m plus delta kt, right? So the fundamental differential equation of the solo model, now we extended the solo model with human capital, becomes like this, okay? So there is a steady state. So if you suppose for a moment that human capital actually goes to a constant, right? So we, in, this, in this particular version, we assume that human capital does not go to a uh, positive infinity, okay? So it is, it's a finite number. Then the fundamental equation becomes, um, let me even simplify the notation. So the fundamental equation becomes S times H to the one minus alpha, KT to the alpha minus M plus delta KT, right? Um, clearly, we can draw the same figure. Now we will have uh, human capital in that equation. So uh, so if you draw it, there is again investment per worker. So this is now S H one minus alpha KT alpha. And there is also M plus delta KT. Right? So there is the steady state here, the one that we are always interested in. So that would give you the K star. And if you write K star, if you do the math, I am taking a shortcut here. Instead of S, now you also have H, right? And you have M plus delta, then the exponent was one over one minus L, right? So if you, if you rewrite it, you have uh, H times S M plus delta one over one minus alpha. Okay, so what is, what is Y star? The steady state, well, remember it is H one minus alpha K star alpha, right? So you have H one minus alpha H alpha, S M plus delta alpha one minus alpha, okay? So in fact, you can rewrite it as H S M plus delta alpha one minus alpha, okay? So as you see in the long run, GDP per capita is proportional to human capital, okay? Now, if you compare this with our earlier formulation when we, when we, um, uh, when we ignore human capital, you would, you would basically get this part, right? This part would be GDP per worker. Now we have this additional term H. So from this, we understand that in the long run, some part of the variation across countries is explained by human capital, right? So suppose that there are two countries and you look at the long run level of long run differences across countries in terms of uh, GDP per worker. Oops. So this is H of J times, what do you have? 
Well, you have SI and I delta, right? And SJ, NJ, oops. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in the next page. So what you have is if you take the ratio of long run GDP per worker in two countries, you have human capital differences times differences associated with saving rates and population growth rates. Right? You can actually write this in this particular way as well. So there's one component of these differences explained by human capital. Another component explained by uh, saving rate differences and another component negatively associated with population growth rate, right? This is minus alpha, one minus alpha. Okay. Now, if I want to understand long run income level differences across countries, for instance, countries uh, such as Turkey and South Korea, okay? I can go to the websites of their statistical offices and I obtain data on uh, saving rates, let's say uh, in one country, saving rate is equal to 30%. In the other country, it is equal to 10%. In one country, average human capital is equal to four. In the other country, average human capital is equal to 2.5, okay? And in terms of the growth of the labor forces, the difference is that, so here it is, uh, uh, point, uh, point zero 0.08, let's say, and here it is uh, point 0.15, okay? Now, if you have this data, okay, and of course we are assuming that we are observing human capital as well, I'm gonna discuss this uh, in a moment, so it's not always very, very easy to observe human capital because it is not typically observed. So we have to we have to find proxies for human capital. But if you have this data, and if I tell you that alpha lies between, uh, you know, one third to one half, okay? So you can calculate this difference. Oh, I, I also tell you delta. I also need to tell you, let's say delta is 5%, okay? Then you can check whether this model, because you also have the data on income level differences, right? You also have some average uh, income level data. I don't know, let's say this is uh, 35,000, some, let's say it's USD, and this is, let's say, uh, 12,000 USD, okay? Then you can tell me whether the model makes sense, right? Now, this actually would be a nice exercise. In Excel, using these numerical examples and doing that for two different alpha levels, uh, and so the alpha and the next order because it was in the uh, denominator here, right? So n i 
is in the denominator here. Okay? So you can actually do it, okay? Uh, there's also uh, alpha one minus alpha here. So you can tell me whether the model is good enough for this parameter value. What you're gonna do? Well, you have this data, you have this data, you have this data, so you're gonna calculate the right-hand side, and you have these data, you're gonna calculate the left-hand side, and you're gonna tell me whether the left-hand side and the right-hand side are roughly equal. Uh, and I completely made up these numbers just now, so I don't really know whether the, whether the model is good for this particular example, okay? But you can do it, and next week we can discuss. Now, uh, another thing, of course, about the growth rate, right? Remember that we calculated the growth rate of capital stock per worker uh, in a very simple way. So it is k dot t divided by kt. So here, what do you have? You have s h to the 1 minus alpha kt alpha divided by kt. And here you have m plus delta, right? So what do you learn from this? Once again, um, you have uh, you have this result. So here it is uh, minus m plus delta here. So this is zero. Okay. Uh, this is g of kt, and this is kt. Uh, this is the steady state k star. Okay. The steady state is stable. But what happens when human capital is larger? Well, if human capital is larger, that curve shifts up, right? So this is human capital zero. Let's say this is human capital one that is greater than human capital zero. So what you see is that uh, countries where capital stocks are similar, okay? Let's say capital stock levels are similar in two countries, okay, KI, equals kj, let's say. So capital stocks are similar, but human capitals are different, right? This is, let's say, country i, this is, let's say, country j, and a j is greater than h i, then country with a larger human capital grow faster than country with a smaller human capital, right? Because the growth rate is here for uh, for that, sorry, for, for that particular capital stock level, the growth rate is here for country J, and it is here for country I. So you can understand both the growth rate differences and the income level differences by this extended model. But of course, this is just the model, and we don't know how, how realistic uh, this particular production assumption is, because we are still, we are still assuming away many different stuff, right? Such as technology or innovation. Here we understand productivity of labor only through human capital and physical capital. And this is still very limited, but it tells us something about, you know, it tells, it tells us something more about income level differences and growth rate differences, right? Because originally we just assumed that human capital is equal to one. And we know actually countries differ in terms of human capital. And, and each country also differs between the, uh, you know, in, in its own history, right? So countries typically start with low human capital and in time through modernity and with the industrialization, all this stuff, they get richer and they spend more on education, they spend more on health and they become more productive workers in time. Okay, so that model is a, is a good starting point for, for all of these numerical investigations about income level and growth rate differences across countries. Uh, so obviously you can, also, you can also check whether growth rates actually depend on um, human capital. There's a very nice paper by Mankir, Romer and Weil published in 1992 at Quartz Journal of Economics. So you can actually check that paper. Uh, it has a very nice intro and they argue that uh, we have to actually extend the solar model 
with such human capital to, to make it more empirically, uh, more empirically satisfying. Okay. So let me pause for a moment if you have any questions about this. Uh, from now on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch back to some microeconomic discussion about uh, how human capital actually be accumulated uh, through health and uh, education investments. So if you have a question now, uh, you, can, you can ask. Great. So once again, that confirms I am the greatest teacher. Uh, so let me talk about very briefly about health. Um, so there's a very nice model in, in David Wilde's book. And it is like this. So let me, yes. So there is income here and there is health here. Okay, so H here is health. And you have basically two curves, two equations, okay? One is, I'm gonna explain what these are. Okay, that is too steep. I'm gonna explain what these are. So H is health and Y is income. Okay, now the red curve tells you that if you get richer, your health increases, why? Well, you have better food. Uh, better health services. Or, uh, uh, um, better health care, and some other stuff you can add, okay? You are happier, perhaps. Uh, okay, so this red curve tells you that. So if your income is getting larger and larger, you become healthier because you have access to better food, you have access to better healthcare services, uh, uh, perhaps you have more time to exercise, etc. Okay, healthy lifestyle. Um, now the blue curve tells you if you get healthier, you earn more. Why? The reason is the productivity effect. Okay, productivity effect on wages. Okay, so if you are a healthy worker, okay, uh, you are more productive on gen in general. And in fact, if you are not very healthy, sometimes you even uh, cannot go to the go to work, right? So you can at some point uh, with poor health conditions, uh, you lose income, okay? So then it's like the chicken egg problem, right? Health is explaining causally higher incomes because there's a productivity effect on wages. And income in turn also causally explains health because you have access to better food, better healthcare services, etc. So there is a two-way relationship between health and income. Okay? And equilibrium, of course, must be here. Right? So then when the two curves intersect, you have an equilibrium level of income and an equilibrium level of health. This is from Wiles textbook, by the way, okay? Now, how do we use this model to understand, I mean, to make this uh, an economic, uh, 
economic analysis? How, 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 I mean, what can we ask and what can we answer? So think of this. Suppose that, uh, let's, let's slightly extend the model, okay? Suppose that there's a variable, uh, oops, okay. Just a sec. So, okay. So suppose there is a variable X, okay? Variable X, such as let's say technology, okay? That increases income for any level of health, okay? So when X is larger, the income curve shifts right, okay? So if this is X zero, this one is Y H X one. Okay, so the new equilibrium is where? New equilibrium is here, right? Because this curve now shifted. So maybe, maybe I can use a different color, just a sec. Uh, maybe I can use a different color. So this was our health curve. Now the income curve shifts right because X is larger. Okay, so this is Y, H, X1, and X1 is greater than X0. So here I have two effects, right? I have two effects. One effect, which is here, okay, this part, so this one, this is effect one. And there is also, since the equilibrium is now here, there is also this effect. E2. Now, effect one is directly because of X, right? Because technology is now improved. With higher technology, we are obtaining higher incomes. Now, what is that effect, E2? E2 is the indirect effect through health, right? When my income is getting larger, I obtain that additional, that additional health. So the effect that I observe on income, right? This is Y0 star and this is Y1 star. The effect I observe has two components. One is the direct effect on X of X. The other thing depend, depends on the derivative of health with respect to income, okay? And that's the only effect on health, right? That's the effect on health. And that effect on health create this additional indirect effect on incomes, okay? So once you have such uh, endogeneities, okay? It is important to 
discriminate different types of effects. In one year, I ask a question in a final exam, I guess. So I asked what would happen if everybody's access to healthcare increases. Okay, so in this model, so this is HY and this is YH. So I asked, the question was this, what happens to income and health, okay, if every person's access to health care increases? So this was, this was like something like something. So, so this question was something like this. So every person's access is going to increase. So regardless of income, you're going to be more health. You're going to be healthier, right? So H is going to is going to shift up. Then you have different effects again. On income, there is a direct effect, right? On health, there are two effects. One part is that, the other part is that, okay? So this part is the direct effect of this policy change. And this part is because when you get healthier, you earn more, okay? So, so we, can, we can play with such models. In, in one year, I guess I asked a mathematical version of it. So there was this particular HY function. There was this particular YH function. So I let them solve uh, Y star and H star in terms of parameters. Okay, alpha, beta, gamma, something like that. Uh, then I made uh, some comparative statics exercises, but the idea is, idea is that be careful when you think of uh, income and health because they have uh, a two-way relationship. Two-way two relationship. Okay, so they both uh, they both are causes and uh, consequences of each other, okay? So let me now uh, pause for a moment again. Um, so if you have something to ask, you can, you can do it. Evet, Nas. Uh, you are you are muted, Nas. Nas, we cannot we cannot hear you. I'm sorry. I was asking why yeah. is the health curve concave? Is it because I can only be healthy to a certain level, or that I spend so much that it decreases my income in the uh, future? Oh, uh, they're both right. So there is there is a there is a limit. Uh, so you may you may imagine that there is a limit to health. Even if you get extremely rich, uh, you cannot be infinitely healthier, right? Because eventually you're gonna uh, get old and die. Uh, and also you may imagine that increasing the spending on your you know health eventually faces the decreasing returns. So you may so so both of them are 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 making sense and, and, and both of them are related actually but that's a good question. Thank you for thank you for uh, emphasizing that. Uh, it, it, so of course I'm uh, leaving some things uh, unnoticed but uh, that is explained in the text. If if you look at the Wiles textbook, so you may, you may uh, you may get much more uh, stuff about the model. Very simple model, though. I mean that uh, income increases health, health increases income. So with this constellation, how can we understand changes in uh, those that affect health for the same level of income? And what can we understand? Those that changes income for the for the same level of health, right? So these these two effects are totally separate. 
Any other question about this? Great, so let's take another break. And before uh, and after the break, we're gonna talk about education, our, our most popular issue, right? So uh, time is now around 2.30. So let's meet at 2.45, okay? Let's okay. meet at 2.45 for our third session. Okay, bye-bye.